We're here with Impact Stories and have Deborah Keller. Please introduce yourself. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here with you. So my name is Deborah Keller, and I'm the head of uh, the Global Impact for Breakfast Network, which we started back in 2008. Impact for Breakfast is an initiative supported by Arthur Impact, which is the impact investing arm of the Rianta Capital Family Office. I'm uh, based here in Switzerland, Zurich, and I am running the ships now five, six years. Tell me a bit of the, your journey to get here. What brought you to this opportunity? We started it as something for us, a value add that we needed for when we were doing our first impact investments in the early days when it was called sustainable investing or social investing. And what always fascinated me is how people, when they come together, what they can achieve together when they collaborate. And that's something we learned early on when we started this network. It was that we came together with people that also were doing impact investments, but also were ready to learn and were in the very early days. And so we in, we started partnering and collaborating with those people and we started learning from each other and co-invest with them. And we shared so many experiences. So and this network grew and grew in the past years. And still today, that's our DNA. We make sure people come together and collaborate. And that's that's something that still fascinates me. And with the impact of breakfast, we have a very wide spectrum of topics that we cover. And I think that's great because we want to be open to new possibilities, new ways of investing, new business models. We want to be and we are a driver of cross-pollination. I think that's something we really want to see out there. For someone who hasn't heard of it or never experienced it, Walk somebody through what an Impact for Breakfast experience is like. So it really depends whether you're new to impact investing or if you are an expert. And so these are both target groups and people that we want to have in the network. Within IFB, we keep our bar entry barriers low because we want to allow anybody who's interested in learning to come and join us. And for those, the newbies of impact investing, they can join our online sessions. They can be part of the online sessions and learn from experts who share their knowledge in these sessions around various topics. And then we also have the experts that are the, I would say, probably the heart piece of our network. They are the ones coming together in local chapters on over a breakfast, of course, a breakfast event in the morning. And they would come together and talk about topics, issues, anything that is of interest in that local city or country. Today, we've expanded to 35 chapters around the globe. That's where people come together and meet and learn from each other and help each other building impact spaces where there is no impact space yet. It can be in countries where the term doesn't even exist and they come together there and, and learn from each other. And so therefore, both are really important to us. The newbies who want to learn and can learn from experts and can have access to all of our knowledge center or anything that we have to share and the experts who are the drivers and that share their expertise in a transparent and open way so people can learn. And that's something we really, that is really important to us. We like to say that we are an informal network. People come together and we want to, they should be comfortable discussing issues and topics that maybe in a different other space they wouldn't do. So we want to give them that space to speak openly about their experiences, what has worked, what hasn't worked. And they're together, they can, others can learn from them and maybe not do the same mistakes. And about how many members would you say you have right now? Today, the network consists of uh, 3,980 members, so close to 4,000. It's growing with every chapter that we are launching. And we have four more chapters in the pipeline that will be hopefully launching this year. And if you had to say what a what does a typical Impact for Breakfast member look like? Are there particular job types or characteristics that your membership tends to look like? We are an investor-centric network. So 70% of our members are investors. I think we have the whole a range of investors that are active in the sustainable finance, philanthropy, or the impact investing space. And then we also have consultants and service providers that also have lots of expertise and knowledge to share. And the smallest group are the observers and the students that are here to learn. It's most primary investors talking with their peers. 
sharing best practices. How do you measure success for Impact for Breakfast? So there's obvious things like growing number of chapters and membership, but how do you know that you're creating value for those people? Like any success stories or ways to quantify that? We have been doing a very good job at this, but we receive informal or indirect feedback from our members and people that came to our network and hosted at an event or speaking at the event. And, and investors who are interested are, are investing in, in those businesses. We have had investors who presented, who found investors that they would um, co-invest with. We had speakers that found strong partners where that follow the same journey than, than they do. But from this year on, we'll be a lot more specific with the impact for Breakfast Network is having. We we'll try to capture that more, more systematically. And we'll be doing this because we are going to do more specific events, very more systematic events for organizations that are interested in doing a series. And there it would be much easier when we work with the, the same organization to see how these events impact those organizations. What is the business model for this? Up to now, this network has been fully supported and funded by Rianta Capital, which is the family office behind Arthur Impact and Impact for Breakfast. The family behind Rianta Capital has been supporting this network because they believe it is so important to have a network out there which shares knowledge and brings people together so they can build on the knowledge that is already there and help uh, grow the impact space. So this has been the main driver in the past years, but in the meantime, we have moved into also helping organizations with the service packages where we'll support them find the right people in the room because this network is so big. It's very easy for us to make sure that the right people are in the room for those organizations and speakers that come in. and. This, because we want this to be a win-win for the organizations that come and speak and for the ones that will be in the room and come to our events. And so what we do with organizations that have an interest in doing more than one event is building a strategic series of events for them. They have a channel where they can get the word out about the work that they do. And that's, that's something that we've started. But I think what is really important to us is that we remain independent. 90% of these topics are shaped by our members. We think it's very crucial to do so because every chapter has their own experts who understand what are the most pressing issues, what are the topics that are of interest, and therefore it wouldn't be the right ones to decide the right topics for, for them to discuss. And so it's very locally led and guided in terms of what the topics are. How do you go about finding the local sector yeah. managers? We've been very lucky. We, we don't have to go actively look for them. They reach out to us. They've been members at our um, network for a while and have been at the Impact for Breakfast event in a different location. And they just saw the value in having something similar. And those are the ones that reach out to us and, and ask us if they can start a chapter. And they will find out with them whether it's, it's something that makes sense. The most important bit for us is when we onboard a new chapter and a new chapter manager is that we want this network to be of value of, for those chapter managers as well. This chapter is going to grow with them and they have a similar mind. So it has to be someone, a networker that enjoys creating and organizing those events. We're helping our chapter managers with a whole backend system where they can manage everything. So we try to keep their work as small as possible. But of course, they still have to organize the logistics and do the invitations. But then at the end, it's a, it definitely has to be a value add for them. Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense. This is somewhat of a soapbox for me. There's probably precious few that invest in the connective tissue, as it were, in the industry of building these networks because it, it takes a long time, doesn't necessarily monetize quickly. And yet, if we want to reach these goals and we're trying to tackle some of the world's biggest challenges in impact investing, and yet we're trying to do it in our own little silos, on our own little islands, uh, separated, and yet we need collectively everyone's input. It can be a thankless and uphill battle. What things has, have helped Impact for Breakfast succeed where maybe others haven't? 
I definitely do think it's our informality and that we create events where people come and feel comfortable to speak and share and not having the intention to creating a business model out of it. Because there were thoughts about how, how about we ask for a membership fee? But then we thought, why? Because there are so many networks out there where you pay thousands of dollars to be part of it. And how do you know if it adds value to your work? So for us, it was always important to keep the, those entry barriers low and let people come and see whether this is beneficial to their work, whether it's beneficial in growing their network. And I think that's something we've been doing well. Our network grew by word of mouth only. We only started a LinkedIn profile a couple of years ago. The first, I would say probably six, seven years, it was just people coming to our events, telling their colleagues the hard piece of our events are the discussions. So we have people coming in that present, but then we open up and then we have discussions. We have honest discussions. We have open discussions where people share their expertise when people sometimes even rant about certain situations and issues. So it's a quite dynamic dialogue going back and forth. And I think that makes it very friendly and a nice place to go to. And I think that's our secret sauce. What's your vision for this organization? Where do you want to see this go? I want this to be the biggest impact investing network that can find a number, but also in a sense what it can do and what we can achieve when people come together and collaborate. Our world is changing quickly. There is so much innovation. There's so many new ways of doing things and there is so much to learn. And, and I believe this is the right network where people can come and they can learn from each other and implement into their business, into the way they invest and also share it and pass it on to others. What are the biggest hurdles you face right now? I would say the biggest hurdle at the moment is there are so many topics and so many requests for sessions that it's very difficult to manage all of them and find out where it works for which location. I myself manage London, Zurich and Geneva. These were our first chapters that we launched before we opened it up to other um, chapters and other chapter managers and managing the events for them. And at the same time, we are upgrading our system on website so it becomes a bigger value add to our members. So we'll have a resource center People would be able to um, connect us online. And yeah, the whole testing of the system, is it takes quite some time. But at the moment, I, yeah, we are very lucky. It's growing and, and we're great, receiving great feedback and that gives so much energy back to us that we know that we're on the right path and we want to grow this even further as much as we can. Most people that we've interviewed on this podcast tend to say they're looking for capital, they're fundraising. Sometimes it's about attracting talent or they're looking for partners in certain regions or markets or, and you might be in a unique position, but if there is one thing that the community could be of most service to impact for breakfast, what is it that you're most looking for right now? People that are interested in speaking at our events, people that have really cool businesses that they want to talk about the experience that they want to share. So everyone who's ready to be open, to give some insight into their day to day doesn't even have to be something new or a new innovation or a new business model that we haven't seen before. We want the platform and Impact for Breakfast to be the one that speak up and also sh share about current issues that, where we should not be investing, what we should keep our, our fingers away from because it is creating more damage than it is having a, a good impact. If someone was interested in learning more, what are the best places for them to find you online? You can find me on LinkedIn and, of course, at our events and our only events, you can join them. I'll be hosting most of them. We'll soon do an upgrade of our system and we'll be building our resource centers, reports, documents, anything that could be of interest to our members. We'll make sure that we've saved it in our system. Thank you so much for sharing your insights and wish you all the best success moving forward. Thank you very much, Jacob. And you're already helping a lot. Thank you for the support.